is the meaning of existence? I don't really care, because I play Dota. And like all Dota 2 players, nothing matters to me in this world except for finding out how to be better at Dota 2. Like all pro players, my job is to find the cracks in the code to exploit the discrepancies of balance within the game. But how do we find those discrepancies? Well, the answer is simple, but it may surprise and frighten you. Mathematics! Mathematics. Math! Numbers! They're the building blocks of existence, but I am no good at the maths. That is why I have found someone who is. Come with me now as we interview Carnegie Mellon Professor Po Shenlo as we break the game with math! Hey everybody! My name is Sir Action Slacks, and today I have a very special guest and a very special series for you guys. Sir, why don't you introduce yourself for those audience out there who've never seen you before? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Pleasure to be here. I'm Po Shen Lo. I'm a mathematician. I travel all around the world talking to people about math. So I brought you here today, sir, because of Dota 2. Dota is my game, but there is just so much math. Before we get into the Dota, into the mathematics, tell me about your background. I think that the thing that I find most interesting is in trying to look at things in real life and realize that what we do every day in real life is actually doing mathematics. Come on, Paul. This is not a purge stream here. I don't add up anything. If I see man, I hit man. I don't do the math and see how much damage it's gonna do. I just like to see that kind of happen. What do, you, what do you mean that we use math every day in this? The deeper thing that we use math for is trying to look at a really complex situation and trying to simplify it. When I opened Dota for the first time, I was completely overwhelmed by this hundred heroes which are all staring at me. And I said, there's no way I could possibly figure out what all of these did. But the way I like to approach a lot of these things is to make decisions based on evidence. On the other hand, when you try to simplify complex things into patterns, then you start categorizing them. Like, when this guy comes up to you, he can stun you. Or when this person comes up to you, they can kill you instantly, but they're really fragile. And by being able to take this complex situation and find the simple patterns that explain it, that's something you do. That's something we all do. And okay. that's actually the point of math. It does make a lot of sense. All right. Now, Paul, I'm going to go ahead and open up your Dota because uh, since we're on that right here, and I got to ask you, what is this, Paul? You've been playing literally nonstop Lena. Can we talk about this? Have you played anything besides Lena, sir? When I started, I was overwhelmed. And so I said, I'm an aggressive player in just about anything I decide to get involved in. And there was this interesting and exciting word at the bottom called nuker. So I clicked on it <laughs> and you could think how much nuker you wanted to be and all oh, max, max it out. Right. So I maxed out the nuker and there weren't that many choices. This one looked interesting. Um, actually, I liked how it had a blend of raw power and also some stun. And it looked yeah. like it had an interesting combination. And something I didn't quite understand when I first looked at this fiery soul. How useful can this thing be? I don't know. I, let's find out. So I think this is where the, the math starts coming in. So something like fiery soul has this escalating attack speed based on how many times you use a spell. I brought up Fiery Soul on purpose because uh -huh. I, I thought that was one of the most interesting aspects. When I first looked at it, I said, how useful can this be? What's the big benefit of plus 40% attack speed with each stat? And now, I think that that is Lena's most interesting attribute, period. Mm -hmm. uh, which is why when we were playing that pub last night, yeah. if you noticed, the first thing I did is I just put Light Strike Array on. And the second thing I did is I put Fiery Soul. I didn't put that Dragon Slave, even yeah. though somehow all of the recommended builds are max out the Dragon Slave first. Of course, I maxed it out right after that. But what I decided to do is I decided to just use that increased attack speed. Because you see, typically, people aren't able to put it all the way into the third stack, right. especially not in the early game. And so when you balance a game, game creators are trying to make games which are fair for typical ways of playing. But I figured that maybe an atypical way of playing would be to spam spells at exactly every nine seconds to turn Lina into a 2x hero, right? Because if you get like 40% extra attack speed, in three stacks, you're 120%. You're over a 2x hero. And that, that's why last night when we were playing this pub, we just started uh, attacking people quickly. Okay, so this is important to me. This is why I'm talking to you, sir because I want to know how to break this game. Uh, this is what pro players do. They basically go out in the patch, they try to find the most broken combinations, and I think that the best way that somebody can get better at Dota is to see the math behind it. Because really, it's all numbers, right? Health, mana, everything is numbers. Your thoughts on like, uh, 
a, how do you examine something and make sure that you're finding something that's truly broken that can be exploited like fiery soul on your Lena last night? The way I look at all of these is I try to see is there anything that's atypical? Yeah. Because when you're balancing a game, you balance it for typical players. And so why I came upon Fiery Soul is I said it's probably atypical for someone in the early game to time their spell casting, sometimes not even to kill anything, but just to get to that Fiery Soul. Which is why what you saw last night is as soon as the other heroes were gone, I went and started torpedoing the tower, machine gunning the tower yeah. with this 2x Lina, uh -huh. right? Now, other things, if you want to find other ways that there might be some gap, is looking at the whole thing through this mentality of what would a normal person do? And is there something a normal person might not do that the game creators didn't balance for? Yeah. Uh, another example is um, in a pub, for example, maybe um, collaboration is atypical. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Very true. Very atypical. Well, you're talking to the right man, dude. I'm the most atypical Dota player ever. Brown Boots and Dagon level 5, Agnum Scepter at 10 minutes. I play complete opposite of people. So you're saying that this is the best way to play. Don't do what everyone else does if you're looking for the really broken stuff, huh? I would say this is yes. the best way to either win or lose horribly. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean don't, no, you have to say the second part, all right? I mean, no. it's called, that's the scientific method. Sometimes it's a positive, sometimes it's a negative. Every game is a experiment in Dota 2. So yeah, it's interesting. I'm, I'm fascinated with how you see the game because you'd not only see it from a guy who isn't influenced by the pros or anyone else in the game because you just started playing by yourself but you're also looking at everything through a real mathematical lens of the uh you know the percentages and the effective health and all that stuff any other uh, heroes that you're interested in that you might be uh, playing later or exploring besides your precious lena i haven't figured this one out yet uh the way i am is i really want to understand what's the maximum i can do with something oh like you're a bot. spammer poe come on man <laughs> you gotta... okay, there was one that, that seems to always beat me which i am quite interested in which is tinker tinker and that's again yeah. because it has some it has the ability to reset cooldowns. So oh. somehow that that tool to me is similar to Lena's increased attack speed. Anytime you have something that lets you multiply how much you can do, like the increased attack speed is a multiplying effect. You can be right. twice the hero. Or the reset cooldowns, you can suddenly spam your spells with only half the cooldowns because you mm -hmm. keep doing the resets. That has the power to 2x or 3x your hero. And that messes up with game balance. So actually what I always do when I start every game is I first keep my mouse over Tinker to ban him if someone already bans Ricky. So yeah, these uh, mathematics pl principles are very interesting. You said that uh, multiplication is so strong, uh, stuff like uh, that percentage-wise. Is there any other things in, Ma in Dota 2 that you s inherently think are like strong things to keep an eye out for? I feel that somehow multiplying is something that we as people don't usually think as much about as adding. Huh. It's like if someone tells you, hey, I can buy something at 70% off. You know what that means is you can buy three of them. Like 70% off is a huge discount. 70% off means you only pay 30% of the price. Uh, you, how do I get better at math, sir? I'm not <laughs> oh. I'm not good. When you said 70%, every time I hear a percentage, my, my hands start to shake. How do you get over the, the fear of mathematics, boss? Ah, no, that's a different question, right? So this fear is something that, is, there, there's many fears of everything, such yeah. as the fear of the first time I opened Dota 2 of what the heck is going on. Sure. Um, and what I'd say is the way that I got over that fear is just by messing around in a, in a context where losing didn't hurt. Right, uh, so I'll say if it, if this was real life, and every time I lost a Dota game, I died. Uh, that would be bad <laughs> anymore, right? But, yeah, but that'd be bad. It's, it's harmless. So I would say whenever we approach mathematics, if you're looking at it from point of view of this is not a test, there's no stress here. This is actually just a game. I just want to know how much of a benefit do I get from going from Crystalis to Dedulus? Yeah. I got all these percents sitting there, right? If you just kind of sit back and say, you know, let's let's think about this. Um, I actually worked this out. The Dedulus is more than twice as good as the Crystalis, which explains the price. Really? How? Do yes. you, well, well, how? Why? When it says 175% damage, yes. what uh -huh. that means is you always do 100% damage, so you okay. get 75% bonus. Ah, okay, I understand oh, that. The first thing I do, I subtract the 100, right? Oh. So it's like I get 75% bonus damage, and the chance of that happening, it says is another 20%, which is one fifth. Okay. That's the important thing. So I'm like, I got a one fifth chance, one in five chance of getting a bonus of 75%. So that means that I'm basically on average getting a bonus of a fifth of 75%. 
Oh, okay. Well, I got it. I literally, this is mind blowing to me. I've been using these items my entire life. I have no idea what they do. I just see the pro players use them. And that makes a lot of sense. Oh, okay. We have we have to start talking about items in a different episode. This is, this is incredible <laughs> stuff. But uh, yeah, but anyway, a good introduction into the mathematics of Dota. I think that we've had here today. Pretty mind blowing stuff the way that you are able to look at this game differently than how the casual video gamer does it. But uh, any any uh, notes that you'd like to, to leave off with on our first episode for just an introduction into the world of math and video games. The bottom line is to be creative, hmm. to try to spot patterns in some really complicated things. And maybe as an end note, we're all doing math yeah. in this way. Math is more than just calculating with numbers and percents. We're actually all doing math. And this is an interesting insight into how you can use this thinking to sometimes find these odd strategies. Absolutely. Well, I know I'm going to be doing a lot more thinking about a lot more things in this game. Uh, thanks a lot for all of your uh, input. And uh, that will, I think, wrap it up for our first introduction into mathematics in Dota 2. And maybe later, we'll see if we can get into things a little bit more intensely and specifically on specific heroes and items. But we'll see you next time here. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.